Okay, so tonight I'm speaking on the presence of God and the place of time. Father, in the name of Jesus, the entrance of your word, give it light. It brings understanding to the simple, bring understanding to us, bring transformation to us. In Jesus' name, somebody say, Amen. Amen. You know, as your pastor, I want you to be established. I love you enough to lose you just so you are established. I repeat the statement. I love you enough. I am willing to lose my relationship with you just so you are established in God. You know, there are many of us, we have wandered in, from place to place. And everywhere we go, they will find something to tell us. But the truth is, what grows a tree is not wandering sand. I repeat, what grows a tree or a seed is not wandering sand. The sand that they carry from place to place is not that that which is used to grow a seed or a tree. It is a soil that is stagnant or stable. A stable soil that receives continuous irrigation that causes seeds to grow and plants so that they will bear fruit. So if I am your pastor, I came to let you understand it is not moving from here and there that establishes your life it is when you are planted the bible says that they that are planted in the courts of our god they shall flourish thank you very much it means that until you are planted in the courts of god you will not flourish a lot of young pastors are so much in a hurry for anointing so they go here, lay your hand on me. They go here, lay your hand on me. The anointing needs a vessel for expression. And if your vessel is a leaking vessel, the oil will not find expression. This flower is four years. This flower has been here for four years. It's watered it for how many years? As long as it's been watered, it receives the right amount of moisture and sunlight. It's still flourishing in the room. There are others we have moved out and they are no more. Why? Because except you are planted, you will not enjoy stability. Except you enjoy stability, you will not grow. Except you grow, you will not bear branches. Except you bear branches, you will not have fruit. Except you have fruit, you will not be able to enjoy from your labor. The kingdom of God operates by scriptural, spiritual principles. And your violation of this scriptural, spiritual principles would open you up to all kinds of things the bible says he that breaks the hedge a serpent will bite him so when i break my hedge of protection i expose myself to be bitten by serpents what is a serpent a serpent represents deception you'll be bitten by deception and a lot of us are deceived please listen to me prophecy is good but prophecy should not be what you build your life on. You should build your life on the word of God. Somebody say the word of God. The word of God. You see, prophecy is good. Please, please, I prophesy. I will never tell you that prophecy. But you don't build your life on prophecy. You build your life on this one. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And he who so breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him. What does it mean? It means that every Christian, you must understand that there is a hedge on your life. Lady, I used to feel this pain in my leg, my, my left leg. I feel some pain be here. So I was wondering, I knew somebody who had a pain and thought it was blood clot. So I was afraid, hey, am I going to also suffer this problem? Suffer this? I was, I was thinking about it. When I went on waiting, God asked me a question. He asked me, that, have I seen a dead person who they say that has a problem with blood clot before? He said no he said because dead people blood doesn't flow out they understood that god is telling me that me i'm dead am i not dead didn't the bible say that the life that i live it is not i but christ who lives in me so i was dead and buried with christ jesus so if i was dead and buried with christ jesus eh, blood clot cannot go up i'm a dead man have you seen a dead man that they said that blood clot have gone up before you see, you see the answer god gave me have you seen a dead person that blood is moving child of god there is a point in your christian life where you must settle it 
I have decided to be a fully devoted follower of Christ. I live my life governed by the word of God. If the thing is not written in the Bible, I can reject it. Any prophecy that has no correlation with a scriptural promise for you, you can reject it. Jesus said, I came according to the volume of the books as written of me. Whatever has not been written in the Bible, you can reject it. The Bible says there shall be none barren in all my holy mountains. So what can you reject? Are you getting it? He said none of these diseases on the Egyptians will come on you. So what can you reject? Disease. Every disease, he said none. And he didn't state specific. So you can choose that this was part of the Egyptian disease. I reject. That is why as believers you must be a pursuer of the presence. Are you why? Psalm 139, verse number 7. Shkataliatas. Jadoliata. Because by the time this program is over, you must be supernaturally established. Because there's a point we will enter, and that one will be prayer. Somebody say prayer. prayer. Psalm 139, verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? And whither shall I flee from thy presence? Two things. One is spirit. One is present. So, what, what, where is the distinction? Please, can you come? This is Lady Irene. Mm. Her perfume, when she walks past you and she walks away and the perfume lingers in the place. What you have received is what? It's the fragrance of the person, right? Yeah. But when she is in the place, would you still smell her fragrance? Mm-hmm. So when we talk of the presence, it could mean too. It could mean God just passed by and he left his fragrance. Or it could mean that God is in the place. And by virtue of he being in the place, you can sense his presence. Do you, do you not get what, what it is? So whenever we say God's presence is in this place, what it is is God had either showed up or he just came and left. So David is speaking and saying that where can I go from thy spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? It means that <laughs> you have put your spirit in me. And because your spirit is in me, when I run, I'm running with your spirit. When I stay, your presence is there because where your God's spirit is, his presence is there. You're saying that, man of God, what spirit is he talking about? Second Chronicles chapter 3, second, second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is. Why is this all? Why is this all? Because when God shows up, whatever it is that have been a source of bondage shall be broken. Look at Psalm 16, verse number 2. Psalm 16. Oh, my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord, my goodness extended not to thee. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offering of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. Now look at it. Go back. He is saying when people follow after other gods, they suffer because there's no presence. Now, so let's look at the effect of God's presence. When God's presence is in a place, what happens? Someone say the effect. Someone say the effect. Okay, come with me to Psalm 97 from verse 1. The Lord reign and let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of ours be glad thereof. Let's give me New King James Version. Class and darkness round about him and righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. So, he says, clouds and judgment surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. So we see that at the foundation of God is righteousness and judgment. What does it mean? It means that God is a fair God. He looks at the situation and he judges it for you. That is why, because God wanted to show favoritism to us, he put something called mercy. So that when you come to him, even though his foundation is righteousness and justice, when you come and your case is not sweet, but because you are his child, you have to appeal to God's presence for the mercy of God. He says that, let us come boldly into the throne room of grace. 
The place is called what? A throne of grace. He said, wherewith we might obtain mercy. You understand me? Obtain mercy and then find grace to help in time of need. Now, everybody look at me. Obtain means to receive. So, mercy you don't pray for, you receive. Grace you find. We, we, <laughs> we find grace. So, whenever you come to God, you go to obtain mercy. Once he shows you mercy, you look for a scripture. That scripture is grace. Paul said, uh, me who is the least among the least, is this grace given to me that I may declare the, the gospel to the Gentiles. Paul calls it my gospel. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy. Accept the help. So let's come body to the throne of grace of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. That's what I said. You receive mercy. And then you find the grace. Grace is found. How do you find it? By scripture. When you find the scripture, that scripture, when you believe it, it becomes the grace that you walk under. So I walk under different graces. That's why I can never ever in my life be poor. If you like, come and take everything from me. What I have received is grace. Hallelujah. I have obtained a scriptural grace and I'm walking under it. When we talk of God's presence, we are telling you that there is a dimension of the goodness of God that when the presence of God comes, you will obtain. Yeah, whenever we say God's presence, Moses asked God for his presence. Because do you know Moses was a worshiper? Moses was a worshiper, so he said to God that if your presence will not go with me, permit me not to go any further. Now, let me show you something. What is it that Moses knew that he could negotiate for the people of God? Whenever Moses came into God's presence, he understood a part of God that nobody knew. Yes. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. Whenever God's presence is in a place, a fire goes before him. So when we say that you are a carrier of God's presence, whatever it is that must be burnt, there's a fire that goes before so that is why there's liberty because the fire of god it can melt everything meltable that is why i find it difficult for somebody to be in god's presence and they say that the person is under bondage i, I find it difficult be because when god's presence is abiding with you you cannot be in bondage because this scripture says a fire it means that anybody that accesses god's presence this grace of a fire going before him and burns up his enemies goes about that's why the bible says that the bible says that don't think about the enemy that is not your cause i read my bible it says and i shall be the glory in the midst of them and i will be a wall of fire around them so when i say i am a carrier of god's presence he means there's a fire that burns around me you can't come in that's why the scripture says that darkness shall not come nigh thy dwelling place Zachariah chapter 2 verse 4 says and i shall be the glory in the midst of them child of god anytime we say god's presence is with you there is a glory on your life what it means is that there is a fire that runs around you and you cannot be touched because when god's presence is on a person's life if you try the person you will die that presence shuts the mouth of lions have you seen a lion chasing somebody when fire is burning around him before that is why they could not touch daniel because there was fire around him. That is why the fire submitted to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because fire cannot subdue fire. Are you, are you listening to me? Fire cannot devour fire. I will be a wall of fire all around her. And I'll be the glory in her midst. I'll be the glory in the midst. Go to the next day. It says, flee from the land of the north. Theater, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds. Of the earth as long as god's presence is there everywhere you go there's a spreading you, you 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 are not limited by life 
The problem that we don't even know we are careers of God's presence. The day the Holy Spirit came into you, that day you became a career of God's presence. But if you don't know that you carry it, you won't expect. If you don't expect, the expectation of the righteous shall be cut off if there's no expectation. He says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. It means when I expect, that is when it cannot be cut off. But when I'm not expecting anything, even though it's an expectation of God, I will not receive it because I'm not expecting. Someone say presence of God. Now look at it. Let's go to our scripture, 97. Let's go to our scripture. He says his lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. So whenever God's presence is there, your life is lighted because whenever God's presence is, there's lightning and it lights your world. That is why when people see you, they must tremble. You cannot run black wood optometry and let it be an ordinary side job. The well, those who have been in the industry for many years, when they hear your company, they must tremble because when God's light is on your life, he says that the lightning of God lights the world and the earth sees, number one, and trembles. When you show up, people must be afraid of you because what you carry, they cannot stop it. Are we together? That is why if you have God's presence, when men see you, they must chase you. If you are single and you carry God, marriage will not be a problem. Because when you are going, you know that you are, you, you are expecting. They are coming. Do you know I get money rough, rough like that? I told you, I cannot be with that money for more than three days. Some way, somehow, the money will come. Why? Blessed shall be my going out and blessed shall be my coming. Have you ever seen God broke before? When he had five loaves of bread and two fishes, Jesus thank God. He said, Father, I thank you always for you do it. Why? He says, because my father is with me. God is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Do you know I used to have asthma? Ah, ah, he disappeared. Though. Yeah. Can I tell you more? I used to stammer. I would say stammer, he disappeared. Simple. They brought a church to the house. And anytime they are doing church, I go there. And the pastor is preaching. And say, God is a healer. I say, ah. If we, he says, when we take communion, God will exit. So I was sitting there. And that communion is not the one you go do. The church, we used to bake bread. We used to bake bread. So the communion goes wrong. The bread goes and everybody breaks some. My auntie bakes bread for communion service. Obia Bubi say, pain, pain, pain. And the, 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 those days used to be... Uh, 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 the one that they mix, the shaman squash. So they do the squash, the red one. They do it so you shake, shake, cap, cap, mo bia, soften the crap, oshie, 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 mo bia. I ate it and said, and and you know the things started disappearing one by one. I used to when I really blood comes home. All those things God healed me. Why? Because God's presence brings exchange. And, and when people see you, you a sign and they wonder. Why? Because God's presence brings an exchange. Number three, number three, God's presence is melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. He is Lord of where? The whole so when you show up and you carry God's presence, mountains must melt. That is why we attempt big things in this church. Because if it's a mountain, we show up with God's presence and the mountains, they melt. This is my secret. All I need is God's presence. All I need is what? If I can have access to God's presence, there is nothing that can stop my life. Mountains melt at the presence of the Lord. Of the Holy. Verse, verse number 6. Verse 6. The heavens declare His righteousness. And all the people see His glory. When God's presence is in a place, the supernatural manifests who God is. That's what it means. Whenever God shows up, the supernatural manifests it for you. You know, that was Upia. Soon, soon, Kura, who said, hmm. Asuma, Asuma, is he? Yeah. I've been to places. They'll look at you and say, hey, why are you? 
Who are you? It's God's presence. It's nothing. It's what? Praise the Lord. All the people see his glory. Verse number 7. Huh. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols, worship him, all you gods. Next verse. Zion hears and is glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgment, O Lord. So now look at me, everybody. When God's presence is in a place, my sister, when people see, that is why nobody is permitted to be barren in faith like that. No, 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 no. In fact, even if doctors have turned your womb upside down, you will conceive. Amen. I'm telling you. Mama, don't worry. Don't worry. Presence of God, anything is possible with it. In Psalm 27, verse 4. In Psalm 27, David begins by saying, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Look, look, look at the statement the guy is using. He says, he, he says, he says, Though an army may rise against me, my heart will not fear. Though, though war may rise against me, uh, he says, In this I'll be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. It says, though an army, oh, go to verse 3. Let me, let me read it for them. Verse 3. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. No, now look at it. Remember, David have said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want in Psalm 23. Based on that understanding, that year though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God, your presence is with me. Now he comes to Psalm 27 and he says that, Though an army may encamp against me, let the army encamp. In other words, there's an encampment of an army. He said, my heart shall not. What it means is all this while the devil is doing everything to get to the heart. But when my focus is on God's presence, look at what he says. He says, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Though my, he said, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me. First one, an army encamp against me. Second is war. It's not a rumor. That they want to invade me. But when they even release a war against me. A war against my mind. A war against my spirit. A war against my family. He says my heart. He says. In this I will be confident. You know when you read the scripture. He says in fact once this happens. In this. By the time the enemy brings a war. In this. In this war that they brought. Is what I'll be confident. I'll be confident. Why? Look at it. Look at it. In this I will. One thing I've desired of the Lord, that is what I am seeking. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why? My confidence is in the fact that there is a presence in the, the, there's a presence in God's house. God's presence is my defense. So we'll let them bring the war. I am happy that they brought the war because I want them to know that I am not my own God. I am not my own covering. I am not my own defense. My defense comes from Almighty God. When I when He shows up, demons go bow. I see. He said to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire. I'm going to inquire. I need a scripture. Uh, forget about the war out there. I need presence because when I show up, look at it. To be all the beauty. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Oh, in the say say problem bar or do we see? In Jeremiah, I think chapter thirty, we are told by scripture. It says, "Alas, that day is." It's trouble. It, it says that day is, is, is grooming. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be delivered from it. So when trouble comes your way, that is not when you go and hide and cry and go and fall. Oh, I'm sure say, upon it for my house demons have been sent against me. Where did they find you? Because you are seated in the secret place. You are seated in Christ Jesus far above principality. The Bible says when they see, you see, you are hidden in his pavilion. How did your house demons find you? How did they find you? They have sent arrows against me. Did they, where did they find you? Let me ask you people a question. The White House in America, do you know where their bunker is? It's on one floor. Answer. I say deep. 
That's the English you can use. Is it on the left or the right? Are you, are you looking at, look, look at me? Let me ask you a question. Putin. Putin. Do you know where his children go to school? Do you know what they eat? Do you know their house? Have you been there before? Mm. Will you find it? I don't know what is a madman. The very man who creates everything. And when people misbehave, he cleaned everything and restarted. And you are telling me, David said, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. And now you are God's child. You are the apple of his eye. You are hidden in Christ Jesus far above principalities and power. How can a demon attack you when God's presence is what surrounds your life? Let me tell you something. Every millionaire, even when their children rebel, they send security to protect them. So the Bible says, the angels of the Lord encamp around the righteous. How can you be a righteous person? God's presence is with you because God's spirit is in you. The Bible says we are sealed with the seal of, of, of the Holy Spirit and, and, uh, until uh, how this we are sealed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. So one cousin, there's a seal on your life. Can you imagine that there's a seal? There's a seal on you means that wherever you go, there's a detection by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit detects where you are. So David said, how can I run from your presence? Say, so how can I run away from your spirit? And how can I get away from your presence? There is a seal. I can't run away. It's tattooed on my skin. Everywhere I go, you will know that this one is one. And when the devil comes against you by virtue of God's presence there, you will behave like the way he did to the Egyptians. He would destroy not only your gods, he would destroy you. The same Red Sea that parted when the jewish people got there it parted though they went through that same red sea when the people got there it destroyed them because when israel got there the sea parted god asked moses why are you crying to me my presence is already with you speak to the situation i say open let me go child of god the days have come where you must have a dogged faith because of god's presence because of god's presence we don't make decisions in Faith Life Church based on how much money Amira has in the bank account of Faith Life Church. We make decisions based on God's presence. I'm driving a car that I didn't buy. The person who bought for me is dead. So nobody can stand up to brag that I bought you a car because even the person who bought the car is dead. Listen to me, child of God. The days have come where when you walk, you must walk as a king's kid. You must walk because you are a carrier of presence. And because of presence, when mountains you they will melt. So the people come in and like, oh, you buy the church. I said, don't put a limit on what God can do. This one, this one that we did it in four months, you are putting a limit on me. So the rest of this church will be here. So they are called somebody to ask for a property. They showed me some property on the Spring Tech Road. They say it's uh, one point one. One is three million dollars. One is one point six million dollars. All on the Spring Tech Road. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. I, I'm looking. I, I, are you listening to what I'm saying at all? Because the Bible says, "By strength shall no man prevail." What causes men to prevail is God's presence. Turn to your neighbor and say, "It's God's presence." So. That is why don't use your mouth to say nonsense things. <laughs> my sickness, Pastor, this my my high blood pressure. Because you have patented a sickness for yourself. When God have not said, the Bible says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect when he, God, has not permitted? So no demon can come and charge you. Neither can you charge yourself. But we are told that we are snared by the, uh, the words of our mouth. It means that the only person that can put a limitation on your life is who? Turn to Francis Eshen and tell him, it is you, it is you. <laughs> My son, Francis Eshen, is a chef. One of the best chefs in Ghana. No, 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 I've had contemporary stews. I've heard Lady Irene's kotome stew. It's on another level. But I want to eat this guy's kotome stew. Then I saw that there's a difference between centipede and millipede. That the only difference between his kotome stew and Lady Irene's kotome stew is Lady Irene's one is made with love. 
So that one, when I eat, the chromosome inside, you can't touch. But this one is a physical contumely that has another level on it. But except he believes that his contumely stew, even when the president of Ghana eats, he won't die again. He will still be living an ordinary life. Meanwhile, he has an extraordinary grace. That is why the Bible says, there is time for everything under the sun. <laughs> There's such joy in my spirit. Because God is about, uh, me who, me, me, I see in my spirit, as it were, they've cut that's it. The crown of a pineapple has been cut off. And I'm seeing the pineapple and it's moving among us in this place. Pineapple. Child of God, from this day you will eat the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. You will end. You see, Moses came to God and he said to God, that show me your glory. When Moses put that scripture on the screen before, before we go to the stand for everything uh, under the sun, he says that, show me your glory. And what did God show him? God said, my goodness will pass before you. Ha! The mountains quake. Things happen. Then God said, my goodness. He said, when you see my face, you will die. But my goodness. It means that, it means that the proof of God's presence on your life is that the goodness of God starts flowing towards your life. It passes before you. It means that when you are coming, it's before. Before. Ah, I was waiting for you. I will give you dollars. I was waiting for you. I'll give you money. I was speaking to my bishop today. He said, I changed dollars. They gave me 6 0.25. I gave you the same money the next day. You went to change the money and you got 6.42. Then I said, Ah, you, you're a serious negotiator. And the truth is, I didn't even open my mouth. Are you listening to me? I didn't open my mouth. I called one of my sons and I said, Find out the rate for these people for me and let me pay for it. My son called the people. And my son gets back to me and gives me a price. By the time I got there and they saw my face, oh, pastor. Then they now they calculated with a new rate. Because the, the rate my son gave me, by the following morning, the rate has increased. Moses said, please show me your glory. Next verse, next verse. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I'll make what? All my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. One day, I'll, I'll teach this one. He says, I will proclaim that God, the word Lord means possessor of lands and territories. I will, I, will, I, will, I will voice that the possessor of lands and territories has come. So wherever you go, you possess that territory. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so, so everybody selling egg. When you alone show up, you become the biggest egg seller in the community because you're a possessor of it. I will be gracious to whom I will. So, so when God's presence is with you, you enjoy graciousness. Not only that, he says, and I will, I, will, I, will, I will be compassionate to whom I have compassion. Go to the next verse. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And I said, here is a place by me. You shall stand on the rock. So it shall be, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while, while I pass by. Look at it. So anytime God's presence is there, you, he hides you. There is a rock he hides you. The enemy cannot penetrate because when God is passing by, that is why this year, you will choose who you want to marry. That's why they say you will choose what to eat. You will choose where you will sleep. Today I sent to one of my daughters how my hall will look like. What am I doing? I'm telling my father and I'm having the witness. Because the Bible says, seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of heavenly witnesses. I'm telling God that the, it's not just heaven because he created the heaven and the earth. So I'm adding the heaven, a, an earthly witness to it that this is the church that I'm going to get in my house. Do I have the money? Who said we buy with money in the kingdom of God? In the kingdom of God, we don't buy anything with money. It says, come buy with that money. Aunt Elizabeth just bought tuition fee of $7,000 with that money. This one was just yesterday, this week. 
Seven, do you know what seven thousand dollars is? Multiply by six point five three if they are buying cartoon skipper. She bought it free. Her son went for scholarship. They chose somebody over over her son. So she called me and said, The people are messing me up. I said, What say? They, they didn't give it to my son, they gave it to somebody. I said, No, God said you, your son will get. I said, Call the school and say you will not accept their rejection. I said, What? Call the school. Tell them you will not accept their rejection that they don't give your son the scholarship. And she called the school and they gave it to her. Because when you are a child of God, you determine what you accept or not. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12 verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may, you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect. Who, who does the approver? Who does the approver? So when you look at a situation and the situation is not congruent with the will of God for your life, you decide to disapprove it. So you look at the situation and say, I approve, I accept. This is what God wills for me and it starts working. When God's presence is with you, you decide what the will of God should be for you. No, it means that you look at the situation and you say, ah, there's presence of God with me. This I won't accept. This is not what God wills. Can you imagine seven thousand dollars? So, like, can't the that is sitting here? She's going to pay seven thousand dollars tuition fee because of why? So people will look at her and they wonder, and what is it that is giving this woman money? If she's not careful, her husband and family will think that maybe the husband left her some ten billion sitting somewhere. What they don't know is that in the kingdom of God, we buy without money. He said, "Can't buy milk without money." What do we do? Buy without money. Buy what? Without what? How do I buy without money? Presence. The presence of God says there's liberty. Look at your life. If there's no liberty, look at your hand and say, Father, nobody comes into your presence. He said, none shall lack her meat. None shall lack her meat. He said, as I live, says the Lord, none shall lack her meat. Yeah, F- 51 verse 1 says, Come to the waters and you who have no money. Hey, look at it. It says, Come to what? You who have what? Money. So you have not what? Money. Yet he said, Come, buy and eat. Now let me ask you a question. How do you buy something? You have to initiate the transaction. I want to buy. Is that not what we do? We do? I want to. He said, And eat. Yes. <laughs> That's the part I love. He said, yes. In other words, uh, uh, in case you are doubting, uh, uh, I meant what I said. Yes, come buy wine. Next verse. And milk without and without Thank you. Isaiah 55 verse 1. So in the kingdom of God, by virtue of God's presence, we buy things without money. Faith like that. When you leave this place and people see you, may they see you as a person of great faith. When they see you, may they know that no, no, no. I say, ah, you say you are Be careful. Ah, faith like church, they've come to your community. They'll buy all the properties there. They'll buy. And that's going to be a grace on our church. Wherever we go, we buy things there. We buy properties. Those that we have mercy on them, we spare their property. Either not, we buy everybody. Reverend Sam Kranchankra, at some point, the companies around where his church was, they were begging him. He was buying every. He's bought every property around him. He's bought. I mean, the guy is nice, but it was nice last year. This year, look at how beautiful. How, how can God's child be driving Hyundai Elantra for more than four years? Why? One car, you have been driving it, sir. What? Let some give it to poor people to drive. You are a, a king's kid. Your father must save your car. He said, this, look at me now. It's 2015. You're in 2020, seven years. Why are you talking about somebody's one? I will give you an answer. It is because I keep changing my mind the car I want. Last year, I wanted Jaguar. This year, I want E-Class. So now I'm wondering, am I buying E-Class now? I'm buying Jaguar now. I'm not even stable. Because I'm, I'm not stable, the scripture has been activated. An unstable mind cannot receive anything from the Lord. Until it is clear, because last year, the car came. Uh, didn't I come to tell you? The car came. Then I'll, uh, and I can, uh, and I, uh, uh. 
So the car left. If I make up my mind this year, I'm getting the car. Last year, by the grace of God, I sat in private jet four times. Without paying one peso. It's just show up. It's what? When God's presence is with you, all you have to do is just show up. Show up. Hmm. You see, in Psalm 16, verse 11, by, we are told that you will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. You cannot be a child of God who has God's presence and you are fullness of sorrow and fullness of envy and problems. You must be full, full of what? He says, at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Hmm. Another reason why God's presence is needed is, is that God's presence brings distinction to a person's life. God's presence, that's what? It brings a distinction to a person's life. Exodus 33, verse 15. Moses said, then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us from here. For how shall the people know? How shall the people, you say what? How shall they know? In other words, God, the distinctiveness between us and the people is your presence. So, so for where shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and the people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Moses understood that the presence of God is what brings distinction to a person. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of God's house, I came to greet you. Have you seen a distinguished person who is poor before? The Holy Spirit is just opening my mind to some truth. Have you seen a duke who is begging for money before? Have you seen the children of a duke who is begging? Do you know who a duke is? A duke is a kingmaker. Have you seen royalty that they are begging for food in the outside world? So David said, I was young, but now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. You, I, I refuse that any member of this church will ever beg for bread, ever, in your life. That. This chapter number three. Verse number 1 to 8. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. To everything there is a word. And then every purpose. So when something has not opened, you don't go and complain. You wait for your season. Or you trust God for a change of season for you. When we said this is a year where we receive grace to thrive in changing seasons, it is based on this scripture that to everything there is a season. Because when God gets ready to honor your life, he doesn't honor you based on your poverty that you experience. He looks at the situation and exceeds your expectation. When God brings you into a season, his presence causes mountains to melt before you. So that you come into an enlarged place. Somebody say, I'm coming to my place of enlargement. To everything, there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Go to the next verse, please. A time to be born and a time to die. There is a time where poverty must die in your life. There is a time where there must be the birthing of favor and grace and success. The ladder your amen, so shall it be for you. There is a time where he plucks up that which is planted. There is a time where he plucks up that which is planted. There is a time where he lifts you from one level and he positions you in a new place of favor and blessing. Now look at it. The moment he moves from a time to plant, he goes to a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to kill. And then there's a time to heal. See, there is a point in your life where you go through different times. There is a time where God kills some things and you no more want to love again. All men are the same. There, there is a time where God, he plants. There is a time where God kills the shame that they try to plant in your life. It is not you who does the uprooting. It is God who does the uprooting by virtue of his presence. So it's a time to break down and a time to build up. Genesis. A time to kill, a, a time to tear down, and a time to build. You know, he went to kill, he went to heal, now he went to tear down, and he's come to build up. There is a time to build up. And I, a time to cry, and a time to laugh. Oh, do, do baby, I stop crying. It's time to dance and boogie. And boogie. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. I mean, we don't have to scatter it. 
There's a time when you gather the stones. What is it? When you read the book of Lamentations chapter 3, the Bible says, Why is the gold become dim? Why is the most fine gold changed? The precious sons of Zion once worth their weight in gold. Why are they now esteemed as eating pitches? The work of the hands of the potter. There is a point where God gathers you up. It is a gathering for your lifting. It is a gathering for your transformation. It is a gathering for your showing forth unto the people. He says, this is the part of a time to embrace and a time to turn away. This year, what are you turning away? And what are you embracing? Someone say, I'm embracing the fake life. I'm turning away the poverty mentality and the superstition. Now, my fathers in the Lord, Bishop Bujirasari and Pastor Bob, every time I speak to them, I say, that is the fake life. You can only be a faith life member to do the things that you do. This year, when God said we will thrive, we are thriving because we don't have money. We are thriving because we have faith. Based on whichever circumstance, there's progress coming. I want you to close your eyes. This year, make a decision. This is going to be your chair. This year, make a decision. It's time for me to thrive. I'm going to focus on God's presence and I will allow myself to be groomed and grow. And then God will do miracles for my life. Just lift up your voice and begin to pray. So it's a time to search and a time to quit searching. There's a time you must stop searching. You must start, you must start, you must start enjoying. Somebody you've been having abdominal pain. God is healing you today. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody you are having abdominal pain. There's this burning sensation you feel. There's a healing taking place. Everybody pray, pray, pray. Pray. We're going to close in the next 10 minutes. Service is over. Just open up your mouth and pray. When you come into God's presence, the judgment of God is released in your favor. David said in Psalm 17 verse 2, let my judgment come forth from your presence. I want everybody to pray. Somebody pray for God's presence. Praise the Lord. Envelope me with your presence. The Bible says when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was a sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. The sea saw the presence and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like lambs. What ail thee, O thou sea, that thou fledest? And thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. Ye mountains that ye skipped like rams and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble thou at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into a standing water and flint into a fountain of waters. When God's presence is in a place, that situation that is difficult, tonight pray and say, Lord, this specific situation, it's a difficult situation. I need your presence. I need a miracle that activates unusual testimonies by your presence. I I pray for the presence that activates testimonies. The presence of God that activates... Pray right now. You need God's presence. You need God's presence. You need God's presence. You need God's presence. In the name of Jesus. All you are praying for is presence. Say, God, I need your presence. Fill me with your holy presence. Wrap around me with your holy presence. Around my life, my family. Wrap your presence around me. Wrap me, oh God. Hide me in your hands. I need presence. I need presence. It's all about his presence. It's all about his presence. It's all about the presence of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. Ah, Rabba Bosha. Mashkataliana. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Makatush Kataya. Marobrororian and Amashanda. Mandolobrororian and Labrorian and Amasai. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. Open up your mouth and pray. Meshkaparianda. Jakatuski Palarianda. Mekatuski prandoro brororianda, mondolo brororianda. You are praying for God's presence to be with you. You are asking the Holy Spirit to go ahead of you, 
to cause their crooked ways to be made straight. Pray and say, Lord, I cry for your presence. In 2022, let the abiding presence of God be with me. Let the abiding presence of God be with me. Let the abiding presence of God be with me. I pray for your holy presence, O God. I pray for your holy presence, O God. I pray for your holy presence because in the kingdom of God, we don't buy with money. The presence of God makes all the difference. The presence of God makes all the difference. palakata. In the name of Jesus, the presence of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the presence of God, the presence, the presence of God, the presence of God, the presence of God, the presence of God, in the name of Jesus. The presence of God causes men to see his goodness and his favor upon their lives. The presence of God ah, provokes unusual turnarounds. The presence of God fills you with joy. The presence of God causes God to lead you. It guides your life. It fills with the joy. The presence of God. The presence of God leads us to not, not just repentance, but it leads us into a place of safety and security. Open up your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, by your presence. I pray for the presence of God. I pray for God's presence presence in my life i pray for god's presence araba bariana na masaya jakadura branda la brarianda mokotoski pararianda e yandala brarianda by the manifest presence of god araba basanda lekado shanda some 139 verse 5 to 12 some 139 verse 5 to 12 is it you hem me in and behind me and before me and lay your hand upon me such knowledge is too wonderful it's too wonderful for me it is high i cannot attain it where shall i go from your spirit and where shall i flee from your presence if i ascend to heaven you are there if i make my bed in shoal you are there if i take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me i say surely the darkness cover me and the light about me be about me be night uh, even the darkness it is not dark to you the night is bright as the day for darkness is as light with you whenever god's presence is with you what even looks like darkness uh, because there's no darkness in god uh, it becomes a light uh, we are told by scripture that in him there is no variableness nor shadow of turning in god there is no variableness uh, nor shadow of turning in him there is no variableness uh, no shadow of turning in God there is no variableness uh, there is no shadow of turning I pray for you tonight uh, in the name of Jesus uh, may God may God uh, to you the night shines as bright as day in other words no matter how the enemy thinks is bringing darkness uh, when I show up and God's presence is with me that that which it seems impossible God makes it possible I I pray for you in the name of Jesus let the light of God shine your way 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 in the name of the Lord Jesus somebody pray and say Lord I need fulfillment by your presence I need fulfillment by your presence Lord bring fulfillment to me by your holy presence by your holy presence by your holy presence father your presence father your presence we ask for presence we ask for your presence presence of god in our lives presence of god in our family we pray that we will experience distinction by virtue of your presence spirit of the living god let the proofs be known this year that your presence is with us that your presence goes with us that your presence is what makes the difference father we are not ashamed to testify 
because we know that we did not gain it by our own fight but that that at which we've received we gained it by your presence Kalosh Kippa touch our lives heal us deliver us in the name of Jesus Amen Put this scripture on the screen, Psalm 44, verse 3.